My name is Mikael Tonkonogi. I am professor in exercise physiology. So we are studying effects of uh, physical training, exercise and detraining in, in human body. We are working with elite athletes and with recreational athletes at different ages and trying to see what is the effect of exercise on health, on performance, on human body in general. The goal of my work here is to better understand what actually happens in the human body and how can you optimize the training process to better achieve your goals with less effort and within shorter time. It's basically training optimization. Quite a big proportion of what we are doing here is focused on children. It feels important because with children you are creating a ground for their physical development, social development, intellectual development, what type of training is optimal, what is the optimal intensity, volume, model of training. Basically, with children before puberty, with small children, it's a diverse training. They should be physically active all the time if they're not sleeping or eating. They're designed to be physically active all the time but they have to develop all the aspects of physical ability. So the training should be very diverse. Unfortunately, it is well established that children today are not physically active to that extent that is required by general recommendations. It's a big issue because some aspects of your future health depends on physical activity in early ages. Your skeleton will never be very strong if you are not put a certain load on your skeleton in young age. So if you are not physically active in young age, you will not be able to compensate for it by being physically active in later ages. The benefits of being physically active at early age is that you create the ground for the remaining life. Different aspects of physical ability are trainable to a different extent in different ages. You have windows of opportunity, like your reaction time, your speed, agility. They are very trainable before puberty. Aerobic capacity during the puberty. Your explosive force is also trainable in the late stage of the puberty. So you cannot say that some ages are more important than the other. It should be right type of physical activity during all the different stages of the development of an individual. The risk of physical activity in young age is exactly the same as the risk of physical activity in later age. If the degree of load, of intensity, of volume is higher than your physical training status, there is a risk of overloading some structures in your body. Basically, children cannot be overtrained. They are designed to be physically active all the time where they are not eating or sleeping. But if you're trying to push them to do certain things your way, and they feel that they are doing it just for you and not because it's fun, then you have a risk of overtraining. Physical activity for kids should be diverse. They should do different type of exercise, different movements with different speeds in different angles, different directions, then it's no problem. But if you are starting to do same movement, trying to make it perfect, and they repeat it hundreds and hundreds of times during the same training session, then you probably can see negative effects. Being a coach for elite athletes is simple. These elite athletes, they know what to do. They have 20 years of experience. To work with kids is always difficult. If you apply a wrong technique in kids, they will adapt it and you will never be able to change it again. You must be able to make exercise fun, otherwise they will quit. And you need to know what aspects of physical ability are trainable in different stages. Actually, to be a good coach for kids require much higher knowledge and much, much higher education than being a coach for elite. And in Sweden, it's just the opposite. That's why we have 60,000 kids injured every year. 
A large proportion of this injury is actually knee injuries. In sports like soccer, floorball, basketball, handball, we have a very big number of children that are injured. The best strategy to prevent these injuries is to perform preparing training focused on increased strength and power in core muscle training. And you have to create best possible conditions to perform the training. You need to create equipment in children's size that they can use and protective equipment like knee sleeves and all other things that help them to perform this physical training. Today, we are having kids that are not even recreationally active. They're sitting, playing TV games and computer games. And then we put them on the arena and they're starting to play soccer and handball or basket. And their bodies are not physically prepared to this load, then we have injuries. So you have to put a lot of effort to prepare their body physically, to give them strength, to give them endurance before they're starting to perform their sports activities. When you are physically active, there are always a risk for injury. And if you can prevent it by any means, if you, you feel safer when you are doing exercise and you have protection like knee sleeves or something else, why not? I have very difficult to see any disadvantages, but I can see advantages. As a parent, the best way to motivate your child to be physically active is simply to support it to show your appreciation and to value that your children are physically active. Children are like flowers. Just give them some nourishing and water and let them grow. The same thing here. Support them. Show that they are unconditionally loved. And that's it. It's enough.